Welcome. On behalf of Glaucoma New Zealand, I'd like to welcome you to the 2020 Glaucoma Patient Symposium. I'm Professor Helen Danishmeyer and Chair of Glaucoma New Zealand. And I'd like to start off by thanking you for coming to watch us and all our speakers for giving their time for the symposium. This is our second symposium. The first one was in 2019, and it was such a success that we were asked to hold another one. Unfortunately, because of the COVID crisis, we were not able to do this in person, but our speakers have kindly agreed to give their talks on Zoom so that you can watch it in the convenience of your own home. I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank Purple Sherbert, who has given their time to help put together the symposium for our internet use. The topic I'd like to start with is glaucoma, the basics. So in the next 10 minutes, I'd like to cover 10 basic facts about glaucoma that everyone needs to know. The first is, what is glaucoma? And this is a very complicated question, but it can actually be made quite easy to understand. So glaucoma is an eye disease in which the optic nerve is damaged by the pressure inside the eye. So the next question you may have is, what is the optic nerve? Well, the optic nerve is the nerve of sight. It connects the eyeball to the brain, very similar to this cable that connects a camera to the computer. The optic nerve is actually not one nerve, but it's made of approximately one million nerve fibers. And you can see that this is a tel telephone cable, which has all the nerve has all the cables going through it and it's very similar to the appearance of the optic nerve which has all the nerve fibers going through that one cable and so the optic nerve is connected to the back of the eye the inside of the eye has a pressure and glaucoma is the disease when the optic nerve succumbs to the pressure inside the eye so the second question is why does the eye have to have pressure well, the eye has to have pressure. If it didn't have pressure, it would shrivel up like a raisin. And so the, the fluid in the eye gives the eye its shape so that it continues to have pressure so it can see. The fluid of the eye is actually produced in the front of the eye by a gland called the ciliary body. It passes through the pupil and, to and goes through the drainage system of the eye, which is like a sponge in the corner of the eye. So the pressure in the eye is formed by the balance between the production of fluid and the drainage of fluid. The production of fluid is almost the same in everyone. So really the pressure of the eye is determined by how the fluid flows out of the eye and how absorbent the sponge is that drains fluid and pressure out of the eye. So on the side of the eye, we have a gland that produces the fluid and then that fluid take is taken and drains through the side of the eye. The fluid therefore inside the eye gives the eye a pressure and this pressure can be transmitted to the optic nerve. So the normal pressure in the eye if you were to take 1,000 people would be between 10 and 21 or 10 and 24 depending on which studies you look at. And glaucoma is the condition where the optic nerve is no longer able to tolerate the pressure in the eye. Now, an important point is that there's not one pressure level at which you get glaucoma. So you can get glaucoma at a pressure of 40. You can get glaucoma at a pressure of 20. You can even get glaucoma at a pressure of 10, which is what we call normal pressure glaucoma. And that's because it depends on the vulnerability of your optic nerve to pressure. So here we see the eye in the side profile. This is the gland in the corner that produces the fluid, and over here in the front of the eye is the gland that drains the fluid. But the pressure in the eye is filled in this entire cavity, and it's transmitted to the optic nerve at the back of the eye. The third point is how does pressure damage the optic nerve? Well, again, we come to this diagram of the eye here. And we can see that this is the gland at the front of the eye that produces the fluid. And this is the little drainage sponge which drains the fluid. Given that this cavity is filled with the pressure, the optic nerve is constantly having to withstand the pressure in the eye. 
when the optic nerve is weakened by the pressure, the head of the optic nerve shows some shallowing or excavation. And it goes from looking like this, which is a very gentle indentation, to a quite a deep indentation that you can see here. And with that indentation, you see loss of nerve fibers. So you may hear your doctor talking about this indentation, which is a large cup or cupping or loss of nerve fibers. And this is what they're referring to. So when, we're, when your eye doctor is examining your eye for glaucoma, what we're looking at is this little pale area at the back of the eye, which is that indentation front on. And you can see that as with worsening disease, you can see how that white or that indentation area gets more and more uh, enlarged. With that enlargement, you see loss of vision and loss of peripheral vision to start with. And that leads us to our fourth question. How does glaucoma impact vision? Well, glaucoma is the silent thief of sight because that it first steals your peripheral vision and therefore it's difficult to become aware of that. So if this is your normal vision at looking at this beautiful tree. As you start to develop glaucoma, it's the periphery that starts to become more impacted and also a little bit of contrast as well until ultimately when you have severe glaucoma, you only see the center part of your vision. So glaucoma is a very slow process. It's an insidious process. It's a silent process. There's no symptoms associated with glaucoma. So therefore, this can, process can be expanding and your visual field can be deteriorating and you may not be aware of it until the very end. In fact, Glaucoma New Zealand estimates that approximately half of the people in New Zealand with glaucoma are unaware that they actually have the disease. So this is a peripheral vision uh, measurement called the per peripheral vision test. And you, if you have glaucoma or you've been to your optometrist, you may have had this done. So it maps the blind spots in your vision. So if we start with the one on the left-hand side here, you can see there's just a tiny, tiny little blind spot at the top of the vision here. This is the normal blind spot that everyone has. With progression of glaucoma, you can see how that comes in from the periphery and starts to take over into ultimately the one on the right here. You see there's this only very tiny island of vision left. Now this person may still have 20-20 vision. So if all they're doing is having their vision checked or looking in the distance, they may not realize it. But they will be legally blind from driving and legally because they do not have enough peripheral vision. So in order to drive, you need to have good central vision, but you also need to have a degree of peripheral vision. And in this uh, test here, this patient would not pass that. And that's why glaucoma can be so devastating because it can take critical sight away without one being aware of it. So who gets glaucoma? Who's at risk for getting glaucoma? 0.5. Well, there are several risk factors for glaucoma. Age is the most common. About 2% of people over the age of 40 have glaucoma, but by the time we're 70, that increases to approximately 10%. Family history is critical. If you have a, a first degree relative with glaucoma, you're five to 10 times more likely to suffer from glaucoma. And that's relevant because it all has to do with the susceptibility and vulnerability of the optic nerve. And also family history has to do with how your, your eye will drain fluid and the effort, the effort it takes for fluid to go through your trabecular meshwork and sponge. So there are more and more genes being identified all the time, but we do know that family history is critical. High eye pressure. Even though you can get glaucoma at lower pressures, the higher the pressure, the higher the risk of developing glaucoma. Short-sightedness. People who are myopic or short-sighted are at risk of glaucoma, and they're particularly at risk of normal pressure glaucoma. African descent, steroid medication, in particular uh, steroid eye drops or eye creams around the face uh, and creams around the face put people at risk for developing high pressure. But in very rare circumstances, uh, systemic steroids, the ones you take for in, um, asthma or, or autoimmune diseases can also increase your eye pressure high blood pressure, and migraine sufferers. So these are some of the risk factors that we've identified for glaucoma. Point six, what are the symptoms with glaucoma? 
Well, I think by now you will have discovered that there are no symptoms in the early stages. Glaucoma is a silent disease. It's like this shark encroaching upon this canoeist who's completely unaware of the dangers about to come and face them. So the only way really to diagnose glaucoma is to have regular eye assessments. So how is glaucoma diagnosed when you go along for an eye assessment? There are certain tests that your optometrist or your ophthalmologist will undertake to diagnose glaucoma. The first is they will look at your eye through a microscope to see if there's any risk factors that can give you um, increase your risk for developing glaucoma. Second, they will look at the optic nerve to see if there's any excavation or loss of nerve fibers in your optic nerve. They will measure the eye pressure in your eye because as we said, the higher the pressure, the greater the risk of glaucoma. They will test your peripheral vision to see if you have any small blind spots, which would suggest glaucoma starting to develop. Once they've done these tests, they will be able to give you an idea of whether you have glaucoma, you're at risk of developing glaucoma, or you have no glaucoma. And Glaucoma New Zealand recommends that everyone over the age of 45 goes for a glaucoma assessment. And then the follow-up visit from that will depend on the findings of your first assessment. But if you're all clear, you have no family history, then normally five years after the first assessment is appropriate. Question eight, what are the treatment options for glaucoma? Well, the treatment options are eye drops, laser treatment, and surgery. So there's a range of uh, treatments possible, and it really depends on the type of glaucoma you have, how severe your glaucoma is, which one your eye doctor will recommend for you. Question nine, do glaucoma drops have side effects? So this is a very important point because although we put uh, glaucoma uh, eye drops in the eye, there is the potential for them to have side effects outside, their outside the eye and through the whole body. And this is often an under-discussed point, and therefore I did want to spend a few minutes emphasizing this. So first I'd like to go through the different classes of drugs that we use as eye drops. And some of you who are on glaucoma medications will recognize some of these and also talk about some of the side effects. The most common family of drugs we use is called the prostaglandin analogs. And the names of the drugs will change depending on what Pharmac is funding at the present time and what's available. And here are some of the different names that have been around through the years. The most common ones at the moment are listed here, latanoprost, HiSight, Travoprost, and Bermatoprost. And they all belong to the same class of family. The beauty of this class of family is that it's very effective and you only have to use it once a day. However, it can have some side effects. The side effects for this class of family are predominantly limited to the eye itself. And you can see how it can cause one, eyelash growth, and two, it can cause eye color change. So it can make the eyes go more brown. Now, interestingly, this only affects you if you have green or hazel eyes. So if you have blue eyes, it doesn't affect your eye color. And if you have brown eyes, your eyes are already brown, so it's not really noticeable. But people with green hazel eyes may notice this change in eye color over several months. The eyelash growth is reversible, but the eye color change is not reversible. So once it happens, it's there permanently. The second class of family is called beta blockers. And uh, the two most common ones are tamoctol, 0.5% and tamoctol 0.25%. Now this class of family drugs is also used uh, for the treatment of high blood pressure. So some of these side effects are relevant because if you were taking it as a tablet form, you would be aware of it. But the important point to realize is that if you're using it as an eye drop form, you are still at risk of these side effects. The most important one is asthma. So that if you have asthma or chronic obstructive lung disease, we really try to avoid uh, this class of medication because it can cause constriction in the lungs and bring on an asthma attack. Uh, lower blood pressure. So as I mentioned, this drug is used to treat high blood pressure so it can lower blood pressure. And the eye drops can also lower the blood pressure. They can also slow down the pulse. And as a consequence of low blood pressure and slow pulse, they can cause a bit of dizziness or postural hypotension. When you go from sitting to standing, people uh, may feel a little bit dizzy. 
The other side effects that people are, often don't discuss but are recognized to occur with this family of medication is depression, vivid dreams, impotence, and possibly a bit of hair loss, although this is a bit more debatable. The third class of drugs that I'd like to discuss is alpha agonists, and the most common one is alpha-gan or bromonidine, which is its generic name. Now, it can be combined with the uh, beta blockers, and that's given as combagan, which is also a very effective drug in treating glaucoma. So the side effects with this one is it can give you an itchy eye. Now, the importance about the itchy eye associated with alpha-gan is it doesn't come on immediately. It can come on months, even years after using this medication. So often people will, will not think it's the drop because they'll say, oh, I've been on this drug for a long time and it's been fine. But actually, if you're on this drop and you get a red, irritable, uncomfortable eye, the most likely thing is you developed a, a late allergy to this drug. The other one is fatigue. It can give people a bit of tiredness and sleepiness uh, when they use this medication. Now, that doesn't occur to everyone, but if you are on this medication and you do feel that you are more tired and sleepy than previously, it may be worthwhile uh, chatting to your doctor about the option of stopping it for a month or so and seeing if the symptoms do resolve. And rarely it can cause high blood pressure. So again, this is something, if you've had a uh, new onset high blood pressure after starting this medication, it may be worth discussing with your doctor. And if you're using it twice a day and you put the last drop in just before you sleep, sometimes it can give you a dry mouth in the morning. And a helpful hint to prevent that is to push on the corner of your eye for two minutes, what we call punctal occlusion, to help minimize this. If you're not aware of that technique, if you go to the Glaucoma New Zealand website, we have a video which demonstrates how to put in the drops and how to block off your tear duct in the corner so that the drops don't go into your system. And this can also cause an altered taste. So the last point is blindness common with glaucoma. And I'm ending on this point because this is actually a positive point, and that's no. If glaucoma is diagnosed early, if it's treated properly, and if the patient is compliant with treatment, blindness from glaucoma is actually quite uncommon. So the main reasons that people go blind from glaucoma is that they haven't been diagnosed in time, or they're not compliant with their treatment, or they haven't been treated effectively. So that's the, the, um, the silver lining with glaucoma, is that it is treatable. And therefore, the key message is to make sure that you're diagnosed early and that you uh, comply with your treatment. So in summary, it's important to learn about glaucoma so you're aware of what, how it impacts you. It's critical to keep your appointments regularly and to comply with treatment. Because of the strong linkage to family history, please encourage your family to get their eye checked. Um, and in fact, it's wonderful to give them a, a voucher to go see their optometrist as an eye check to make sure that they don't have glaucoma please join Glaucoma New Zealand. We would like to support you in, through your journey in learning about glaucoma and managing it if you do have glaucoma. And as uh, Glaucoma New Zealand, we will continue to support glaucoma research so that we can work towards finding a cure for glaucoma. Thank you again for joining us.